Hey, this is Terratoots with a quick tutorial on creating a basic lake in Terrigen 4. We'll start out in the default scene, where I've reduced the displacement amplitude to 500 meters. This will give us terrain that's more like large hills instead of mountains. I've also disabled the mask that normally creates a large flat area at the origin, so we'll have hills throughout. The first step is to find a good place for your lake. For a more customized lake, you might want to shape the terrain and create a lake bed. But for this basic tutorial, we're just going to look for a nice indent in the terrain where we can put some water in. For this tutorial, I've selected this view here. Now that we have a location, the first step is to choose a water level. Do this by right-clicking a likely spot on the terrain and choosing Copy Altitude. Now, come to the Water tab, click Add Water Object, and then Lake. Select the lake and then paste the copied altitude into the water level field. We can get a good look at the result by making sure the atmosphere and lighting are turned on in the 3D preview. At this point, you can fine tune the water level. We'll smooth the surface of the lake a bit by opening the water shader and reducing the roughness to 0.005. I'm also going to bring the transparency of the water down a bit. The next step is to add some shaders. We'll keep it pretty simple and stick with three main layers a dirt layer, a grass layer, and a mud layer along the lakeside. In addition, we'll also add some fake stones and a reflective shader at the edge of the water. Before we start working on our shaders, I'm going to let the terrain finish generating and then switch over to the ray trace preview. First, the dirt. We'll add a new surface layer and give it a brown color. To vary the color a little, we'll add a color function. Come into it and bring the low color up so that it isn't quite as dark. We'll call this layer dirt. For some additional variation and detail to the dirt, we'll also add a child layer to the main dirt surface layer. And we're going to set this power fractal to a smaller scale. This color will be somewhat darker. With a small displacement to give the surface some roughness. I'm going to set this noise type to Perlin Billows for a more patchy feel and add a warp effect for additional variation. Next will be the grass. We'll add another surface layer this time with a green color. And this time, we'll add a minimum altitude constraint to keep the grass out of the water. I'm going to set it to 4 meters with a 2 meter fuzzy zone. We'll also add a slope constraint of 45 degrees with a 20 degree fuzzy zone to make it so the grass doesn't cover the steeper sections of the hill. Once more, we're going to vary the color with the color function. And this time, we're going to use a couple of different green hues. I'm also going to add a child layer to the grass for some darker patches. I want these to break up the main green a bit, so I'll increase the contrast, bring down the offset, and increase the roughness. I'm also going to come over to the Tweak Noise tab and increase the buoyancy from variation and clumping settings, both of which will increase the clumping of this darker green. We'll also add some warping here. Because this is a child layer, it will automatically inherit the altitude and slope constraints from our main grass, so we don't need to add those again. Next, we'll add a mud layer along the edge of the water. This will be a simple surface layer with a dark brown color. 
We'll reduce the coverage just a hair to let the dirt below show through and add a maximum altitude constraint of 2.5 meters with a 0.7 meter fuzzy zone, which should bring it just along the edge of the water here. At this point, you can see that our lake is really starting to take shape. In the next video, we'll look at adding some grass, rocks, and wet patches along the lakeside, as well as some trees to cover our hills.